Holy Mass on the 27th Sunday in ordinary time. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, how mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, how mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does no dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, he cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedges, 
give it to grazing, break through its walls, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Response, the vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. A vine from Egypt you transplanted. You drove away the nations and planted it. It put forth its foliage to the sea. It shoots as far as a river. Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The boar from the forest lays it waste, and the beast of the field feed upon it. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. O Lord, God of hosts, restore us. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is an, any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death, 
and leaves his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce for its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Jesus Christ, when we look into his life, it's always surprising to see how courageous he was. He was a man of great conviction and courage. When we realize the context of this gospel passage, it's actually amazing. Two or three days after the Palm Sunday, his glorious entry into Jerusalem, he is in the temple. And he knows those people who are listening to him, the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees, hey, they are planning to kill him soon, within a couple of days. And that's in his mind. He knows those people, but without any fear, without any doubt, he is predicting his own future in front of those people. Of course, he is using a parable and they are not understanding it fully at all. The vineyard, the people of Israel, built by his, by his father. And the father who sent all those prophets and fathers to take care of them. But all of them were mistreated by the people, by the elders, by the chief priests of the times. And finally God the father sent his only son, Jesus Christ, and he knows they will kill him soon. But interesting, the question that he asked them, what will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? Those people did not know that Jesus actually asked them to make a judgment on themselves without knowing based on their legal system, based on the law of the time, the covenant of the time, the commandments, they are actually making their own death sentence without knowing. Because they said, the wretched men will get a wretched death and the vineyard will be given to good people, good tenants. They were making their own death sentence. But Jesus, of course, he did not come to implement the law the same way it was practiced. He came to lift the law up into the higher level, give it the fullness of meaning to it. And as for the new law of Jesus, the wretched men are not going to get a wretched death but they are going to get salvation. Because for them all, he is going to die. He is going to be thrown out of the city limits. And they think that's the end of the story. They buried him, finished. But that stone becomes the cornerstone. Jesus becomes the cornerstone of the new covenant and everything is going to be rebuilt upon him. In the new kingdom, no wretched man is going to get a wretched death. They are going to be saved through his death. And that's the change we are seeing. Because Jesus never asked his father, Father, show them justice or fairness. He never. I think we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. He asked his father, Father, they do not know what they are doing. Forgive them. Christianity, therefore, is not a religion of justice or fairness. 
Christianity is a religion of mercy and forgiveness. It's not about a wretched death, but it's about salvation of all. Because for all the wretched actions that can happen in this world, he died and he rose so that we may have life. The song that we sing, Amazing Grace, that's the meaning of it. Because of his amazing grace, the wretched is no more wretched. Because of his amazing grace, he died so that we may have life in fullness. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten Lord made, consubstantial the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins, to look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank Almighty God for making us in His image and also making us His children in Jesus Christ. And we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in everyone else. For the Pope, bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may imitate the Son of Man in leading the people of God to the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. 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 For our president, our congressmen and senators, the justices of our Supreme Court, and all who seek to foster principles on which this country was founded, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That God, who looks for justice rather than bloodshed, may strengthen all nations to protect human life, especially at its most vulnerable stages, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That families will be strengthened as they seek to welcome the Lord into their hearts and homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That all who have died may be purified of sin and welcomed into the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. For Fred Heckemar, whom this holy mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. For a week and a bunny the block was celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary this week, that God may continue to bless them, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Offertory hymn is number 320, 320. 
that my sacrifice and grace may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands. And through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with beautiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty to our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for a ceremony out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant and praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy alone, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
bless apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and for my divine mission, we are to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, for we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, Apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with your grace. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am no worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 551, 551. Oh. 
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will begin our CA program on October 21st, and you also still need a sub teacher for the program. And CCD classes will begin with Rosary at 6.40 p.m. this week, no Mass. Uh, this week there will be no Mass. The Lord will be with you. Yes. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Yes. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And O thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 577. 577. Oh, beautiful, gorgeous skies. Oh.